Uh, radical prostatectomy uh, surgery is a surgery that uh, completely removes the, uh, the prostate gland. Uh, it's the only way you have of completely eradicating yourself of cancer uh, if in fact that cancer is localized to the gland. Uh, we're anticipating that uh, we'll have one night stay in the hospital and if things go well, which we're anticipating, uh, probably leaving to go home in the afternoon of the next. My name's Meryl Lee. Hi, Meryl Lee. And I'll be getting you set back to a room here. Okay, good, uh, good. And what's next? Then we get your blood drawn and okay. we let you get mm -hmm. changed into one of our wonderful gowns. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Great. Okay. Yeah. Good to see you. Good to see you. Okay. I won't shoot that into her. Hi. Hi, John. Jack. I see you. Handle that. I Six small incisions across your belly when you wake up. You'll have a catheter in your bladder. Um, that'll probably be your biggest complaint, which is just fine. Because you got to have something to complain about, right? Okay. Everything goes according to plan home tomorrow. And uh, I think the surgery is scheduled for around three hours, but we'll stay till we're done. Sure. Don't worry about that. You'll be sleeping. It's them who's good. Well, I'm going to go change into my other blues then. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. I'll see, see you later. shortly. Dr. Nemicus will be in just a little bit. Good. Okay, thank you. We'll be able to talk to you afterwards. All right. Okay. Uh, All righty. This would be kisses and hugs time, guys. Okay. And then I have some happy juice for you. <laughs> there you go. I love the happy juice. Oh, we yeah. got to fix it. Looks too much like an artist here. Oh yes. <laughs> oh yeah. We have to look nice for the yeah. camera. Yes. We're going to okay. disconnect all these things. We'll hook all these back up when we get in the room. We'll be there. We'll be back. We'll be out. Dream of tenderloins. Remember? <laughs> Remember the tenderloins. If you're looking for a really good tenderloin. What I expect is hopefully he'll be able to get some great cancer control. And then on top of that, get good urinary control back in a reasonable time frame. Hopefully notice that his stream is a lot better afterwards. And then down the road, hopefully have a good return of erectile function and, and be back at doing the things that he wants to do as soon as possible. Get him back to feeling like himself. I'm very comfortable with the doctor and uh, again, with his confidence in the surgery, he seems very personable. Um, a good surgeon. So we're just uh, resting in the good doc's hands and God's. Robotic surgery is a benefit, uh, first of all, for smaller incisions, uh, so there's less pain afterwards. The recovery time itself is less than before. Um, I think that the precision that's allowed from the optics, from the camera system, as well as from the um, wristed instruments allow hopefully a better cancer surgery as well as all the other benefits in terms of urinary control and erectile function. Precision is really what it comes down to. Yeah. Looking pretty good. Keep going the same direction now. A little bit to your left, please. A little bit more left, hard left. Squared up on the table. Looks pretty good, straight in. You know, you can read all about the process itself and anticipate, but of course, uh, until it actually occurs, you, you don't know exactly what to anticipate. The doctor's office the, and St. Luke's Hospital was very thorough oh, in explaining very. the process. We were, we were really impressed with that. Very sensitive to our needs in going through this process and what we might be uh, anticipating and uh, anxious about. Uh, she would anticipate questions um, and of course uh, responded to the additional questions that we had. But uh, we have been very favorably impressed with uh, both Dr. Rippentrop, his staff, and with St. Luke's. Sure. So we're making a total of six small incisions across the abdominal wall here. Four of those will be control, will have robotic arms access through them. Two of them are going to be ports that will be used by Dr. Richardson to assist. Give him a big, give him a big smile there. Um, right now I'm just injecting some local medication in here, so hopefully when he wakes up it doesn't hurt quite as bad as it possibly could. And right now we're just putting some carbon dioxide in his belly so that we can kind of expand this. And, yep. and then we can get our port in so we can take a look around.
Richardson is going to put in a retractor and hold back the bow a little bit so we can see what we need to see. Thanks, Tim. So we're going down actually here behind the bladder a little bit. And we're going to go find a couple of glands posterior here, back behind this prostate called the seminal vesicles. Just make a little incision across here. Big prostate, eh? Yeah. Wow. The, so to, my, to here. the left here on this side is where the prostate's at now. And it's kind of held in place by a bunch of muscle and fibrous layers that you have to sort of peel off and tease away. Sometimes the teasing works well and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. So everything that's above that needle right now represents a fairly large vein that uh, we tie off here so that yeah. it decreases hopefully dramatically the chance for some blood loss. Catheter seems okay, Tom? Hmm? Here, put on the palm of your hand. You get a size comparison there. That's how big it is. Pretty big prostate, actually. Call it medium sized. I mean, it's okay if I talk to family? Yeah. B. Thanks, guys. See you guys later. Okay. Guys, all done. He did great. He was very cooperative. It helps when they're sleeping. <laughs> have a seat. Have a seat. No, things went fine. The prostate came out very well. He had a reasonable sized prostate, so I think he's going to pee better. Oh, good. You know, that, there's an advantage there. Um, but um, everything really went according to plan. He got great nerves on both sides. I think the margins look good. The pathologist will tell us more about that. Um, which will be the important part, and then more importantly, what his PSA does in the future. But um, it, it went very smoothly, so I anticipate he'll do just fine. Good. I think it went pretty well. I think um, the prostate came out very well. The, the margin status will be important, and more importantly, his PSA going forward, as I told the family. But um, in terms of, of blood loss and nerve sparing and, and hooking things back together, I think it went really, really well. So hopefully, hopefully he'll feel the same way. From this point forward, I expect that the patient will be in the recovery room for about an hour to an hour and a half, sort of getting their bearings and, and getting their sea legs under them, if you will. Then we'll move them up to the floor and get them back in touch with their family. Come on in. Did do up there. Okay. And I will be right back with his belongings. Thank you. Um, from that point, we'll have them up and out of bed already tonight, probably on some jello and soups and in the morning and hopefully steak and eggs and, and uh, see about going home tomorrow. You've got company. He's got the thumbs up. Are you still awake or are you still half asleep in there? <laughs> How you doing, hon? Good, good. In terms of recovery for uh, Mr. Mann, you know, I think that everyone is very different terms of how they recover. His pain control hopefully will be fairly good fairly quickly, and so that'll allow him to get up and move around and do things, and what he'll realize is the more he does stuff, the more he's going to feel like doing more things. I'm right here. Well, I'm very happy to report that the prognosis uh, for my health is very, very good. Uh, starting with the day after surgery, Dr. Rippentrop spoke to me that uh, the uh, reports uh, coming back were very, very good, um, and so we're very thankful for that. Then 10 days later for my follow-up visit, we had another uh, blood test and PSA taken, PSA take, number taken, and it was, in his words, uh, the number was almost negligible. He said, Bob, I am so pleased. He said that uh, it is almost as though I can't read the PSA. And then, of course, uh, meaning, uh, the less of the number, the lower the number, the better it is. And it's been a gradual process of recovery, um, and getting some control things uh, in line, in order, doing exercises for that, being able to uh, uh, urinate properly, and uh, um, all of that. Uh, things are going very, very well. And as you've seen, we've been very active and back to our little part-time job and playing tennis and fishing with the kids and 
and playing in the, the water in the pool. So it's been great. I'm glad I had it done. A prostatic specific antigen or PSA test is a simple blood test that combined with a digital examination can help lead to early detection of prostate cancer. Current guidelines from the American Urologic Association recommend to begin screening at the age of 40. It is also important to know that men with a family history of prostate cancer or of African American descent are twice as likely to develop prostate cancer. Be sure to have regular checkups with your doctor that include PSA screening and prostate examination. If you do need surgery as Bob did, St. Luke's Hospital is the leader in robotic surgery. Doctors at St. Luke's are using robots in the operating room for this procedure and others more than any other hospital in the state. In fact, St. Luke's has earned the status of Iowa's robotic surgery leader and is a training center for other doctors learning to perform robotic surgery. And because robotic surgery is less invasive than traditional surgery, there is significantly less pain, which results in a shorter recovery time and a quicker return to normal daily activities. This kind of technology and experience means a better outcome for our patients. To learn more about robotic surgery at St. Luke's, visit stlukecr.org for a free web consult online.